after the devastating floods that hit York in 2015. The government gave the Environment Agency £45 million to invest into the flood alleviation scheme in order to help protect the city in the future. We secured £45 million to improve flood protection to 2,000 properties across York by 2021. Um, as part of that, we announced our sort of outline options in our five-year plan, which was published um, back in November 2016. Since then, we've been working on plans and more detailed proposals across the city. Um, and in November, we went out um, to the public in Clementhorpe, which was the first of the schemes that we were putting forward to show them our ideas there. Since then, we've gone across the river at Newark, and this week, um, we've got plans available for this stretch around North Street from uh, Ouse Bridge up to, to Scarborough Bridge on the, the right bank of the Ouse. And uh, plans here um, at the hub at Wellington Row, um, here for the public to, to come and have a look at. The scheme is split up into 18 different projects, which are spread across the city. These are areas which are sort of hydrologically different. They flood from slightly different mechanisms, so they all need a bespoke solution. Um, so as I say, we've been out to speak to the public in three of these flood cells so far and we will continue to go through the rest of them over this coming year as we start to move forward on the project. So how exactly will these proposed plans protect against flooding? We're looking at, in the city at a range of sort of new flood walls and flood gates, embankments, it's things like that through the city. Um, a lot of these are already in place and it's a case of improving and enhancing what's already there but in new um, in, in some cases there's need for new walls and gates. The hub is open to the public and the Environment Agency are eager to hear people's views and opinions. It's very important, um, York's a, a, a very important city, it's a very historic city. Um, we need to ensure that whatever plans we bring forward are in line with what the public want and we can get buy-in from across the city in order to get this scheme moving forward. But it isn't just graphs and diagrams that are on show. So this is our flu model down at the hub and it provides an opportunity to sort of demonstrate a few different flood risk features uh, and things that we can do. So this is a, a good example proxy for uh, tree planting in the uplands and, and storage there. So you can see when you've got a relatively low amount of water coming through, it's still in the channel, it flows nice and quickly through here. You start to add more water to the system, you find that the vegetation on the side of the river as it goes out into flood, that vegetation in the floodplain helps to hold back water here. So you have a lot more water stored upstream compared with the level downstream. And one of the things that we get asked fairly regularly is, is why don't we dredge within the city itself? Um, and I think this is quite useful to demonstrate why that in itself doesn't make a great deal of difference to the flood risk um, and isn't the most useful thing we can do to reduce the risk within the city. So what you can see here is the impact that the bridges have within the city. So these constrict the flow and have quite a big impact. So we see downstream of each of the cities, uh, each of the bridges within the city, we see a different flood height. So if you look upstream of the first bridge, you have a water level up here and downstream it's here and mark that up again and in the bottom between the bridges here we have um, this to sort of demonstrate some bed material or silt that might be within that location so if we were to dredge this system and take all of this material out we can run the model again and show the difference that has with the same flood flow going through again we marked up the heights up and downstream of the bridges before and taking the material out of the bed of the river there in York hasn't made any difference at all to the levels anywhere up or downstream and that's because some of the other factors in York such as the bridges and the tidal impact downstream have much more of an impact on levels than any material within the river itself. With the five-year plan getting underway, the flood alleviation scheme isn't going to stop there. What we can do in the next five years is try and better protect 2,000 properties across the city. That is short term. If we think about the impacts of climate change, etc., um, we will see and we are seeing an increasing risk 
um, to the city. So we need to work not just within the city boundaries, but also upstream, doing slowing the flow projects and some natural flood management and looking at further storage options in order to reduce the amount of water that's coming through to the city in the future. The hub is just by Lendl Bridge on Wellington Row and is open to the public on Monday, Wednesday and Thursday for you to have your say on York's future. Abby Walker, That's TV.